one month away from Christmas, which means we're only 11 months to go to get to Christmas. Isn't that right, Wes Reimnitz? I never thought of it that way, but you're right, this being the 25th. Yep, today's the 25th of January in the year of our Lord, 2024. I'm Pastor Tom Baker, and with me is Pastor Wes Reimnitz, as we're going to take a a look at a common misperception on the part of people. They believe that it is not a lie if you believe it. Now, I find that very interesting. This is an uh, email that was sent to us and has some very interesting points. It's not a lie. It's by Robin Schumacher, and... He talks about the resignation of Claudine Gay from Harvard. She was Harvard's president. Now, why did she have to resign? Well, because she said the the conservative weapons against her was about plagiarism, that she was a plagiarist. In other words... When she was writing, she was pretending that it was her thoughts, but she was actually borrowing it from others. Right. Or, as they say, she forgot to put in the quotation marks when she was quoting other articles in her dissertation. And this made her lose. She had to resign as president of Harvard. That was interesting. I hadn't heard that before. And part of it was because in her quotations, she was not condemning anti-Semitic activities, which resulted, of course, in Jews at Harvard not feeling very good about her at all. Well, it started over... You know, of course, they had the protests at the colleges, including Harvard, about uh, anti-Semitic and things of that nature. And as as she as it pointed out in a different article, she forgot to to uh, say that it was wrong. That uh, she forgave, she forgot to convey what is her truth. Yes. In fact, we pastors recognize that a lot of people lie because they believe it. For example, do activists who broadcast such falsehoods really know that they're lying or what's going on? Or are they pushing their agenda uh, ahead? They actually believe the lies that they're espousing. I'll give you a very good example in Christianity. Do you know how many people believe in evolution? Well, millions. Yes. That is a lie. But since Mm. they hear it being taught in schools... And every now and then I like looking at YouTube and they're talking about the universe. And all of a sudden I find out that the earth is millions and millions of years old. And human beings, of course, were not there originally, but they progressed. They evolved. You know, they were once reptiles or big fish or snakes or whatever, and they became human beings. This is all a lie, and yet people think it's true because they believe it. Yeah. You know, I like the explanation that you have about the stars in the sky, that it's a million light years away, so that means 
the universe has been there millions of years. But when you read it, it's it's a slice of that exact moment that God created it, that it was a million light years and the light was hitting the earth. Yeah, just the idea of God telling Abraham that his descendants would be like the stars in heaven assumed that Abraham could see stars in heaven. Right. Boy. Now, some people, what do they talk about on porn use in marriage? Hmm. Yeah, it's all kinds of espousing over the Internet. Porn use in marriage is a good thing. Or the real victims of looting and smash and grab are the looters themselves. Yes. In, In other words... There's no doubt that people can talk about food and say something like, well, rice cakes taste great. And they can believe that that's true. But somebody else can have a rice cake and they don't like the taste at all. Well, so what is the truth that we're getting into? I didn't hear that. What kind of truth are people thinking about when they think that rice cakes taste great? Well, they think that the lies that they're spreading are correct. Yes, because they have their own private Truth. Boy. That's key. That's key to what you're talking about. You know, we often quote that, that Bible passage of John 44, where it talks about the devil being the father of all lies. But what's interesting is when you read the whole verse, he speaks out of his own character. And I found that yeah. interesting that we speak out of our own character. Yes. One study took a look how a single exposure to a false headline made it seem truer to people. Now, we really find that when you go to the Internet these days and look at the social activities and you hear about maybe some actor or actress that did something that was, in your view, really wrong. And, of course, you believe it because somebody said it happened. In other words, what does the repetition of lies do? Well, the repetition is is the illusion that, that they are to believe, which brings up, you know, when we were going through college, through the seminary, through our graduate programs, uh, we we tested out the the quotes or the studies that we were reading, with and finding out where where did they come up with the facts, and we should be doing that with the internet, and we're not doing that. Well, I went to the seminary where. Ninety percent of the students walked off campus. What did they believe was true is what certain profs were telling them. And they had a high respect for these profs. And therefore, if a professor told you that Israel did not really cross the dry Red Sea but went over on boats, and a lot of other things that were contrary to the Bible, I couldn't believe how many of my fellow students believed that. They believed it because it was a lie, but they thought it was true because of the source. Exactly. Um, I'm 
been rereading parts of my Luther uh, as part of my studies, local, individual studies. And I take a look at uh, the first chapter of Genesis, and Luther brings up, you know, almost talking like it's before Darwin in the theory of evolution, but he talks about how philosophers talk about uh, the beginning of the world. And, and he brings out the distinct flavor that the power of God's word to create. And over and over he talks about the creation of, of, uh, of the world through God's word. Yes. You and I recognize in some Christian churches the lies that are promulgated by pastors and people believe them. We talked about one of those not long ago, that the reason that good things happen to you because you're leading a good life. So if you can find a parking space in a crowded area in the city, then, oh, that's because God recognizes how good I am. The car. Very good. That's karma. What what religion talked about that? Well, that was the, the uh, Hindu religion. Yes. Eastern mysticism. And karma means, depending on the life you live now, what can happen to you when you die? Well, you, you go to a higher state. If you were a bug, you get to go to being an animal or an animal onto a human being. Right. So what state you're going to be in, in your reincarnated position, depends on how good you are in your previous life. See, that's a lie. No doubt about it. So... If you hear a single exposure to a false notion, that makes it seem truer. Whereas others in the field of repetition of lies, in particularly, love to tell lies in trying to get them to stick. The more we see something repeated, the more likely are we to believe it. This certainly shows in a lot of areas. How about people who gamble? What lies are they following? It's always the next bet is where I'm going to make my fortune. Yep. We had a wife of a Lutheran pastor who committed suicide because she had taken the money that they had reserved, she and her husband, for their teenagers for college and spent it in gambling and lost all of it. And she was totally disillusioned. That's what happens when you begin to believe a lie. Mm-hmm. In fact, mm-hmm. one of the areas I see this in movies all the time, I was watching a, a true movie about a plane that had lost its engines. In other words, they weren't working. And so they were just drifting towards the ground. And some people were upset and others weren't. But I remember one man walked up to one of the stewardesses and he said to her, how are you feeling? And she says, I feel fine. And you could tell that she wasn't fine at all. Do you find that a lot in church members that they give you the impression they're having a better life than they really are? Yeah, you know, coming out of church on a Sunday morning, they they may not, but, you you know, 
that reminds me often of the time that they were coming out of church and they were going, that sermon was meant for me and it made me feel better. Yes. And, and of course, we shared with them law and gospel and comfort in, that they have in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, you can have a really good relationship with your members, and then one day, say the wife phones you and wants to meet you at your office, and when she does, she tells you that her husband is suing her for divorce, and you had no idea about it. So she was living a lie. She was living a lie, or was the husband living a lie? Well, they both were. Because when that occurs, the wife needs to what? Work with the church and the elders to bring discipline to the husband. But how is it a lie for her if she's been trying to live in in the truth uh, and... and, uh, Well, she may be aware that he is leaving her, but she's not telling anybody. And so when people ask her, well, how's life going for you? She keeps saying, oh, it's fine. You know, she's hoping that he will come back. And so she is not realistic as to what is going to be happening. That makes sense. Yes. I I wouldn't have said it if it didn't. (laughs) (laughs) But you see, human beings, according to the Bible, are born at odds with God. How do we explain that spiritually? Well, in in sin did our mother conceive us. You know, yes. we were born born in this sin. It really goes back to to the first sin committed in the Garden of Eden with the serpent and, and uh with the man and the woman. Uh when the serpent said you'll be like God, you knowing you know, knowing everything and you ended up finding out, yeah, you knew you were naked and you knew life and death. G.K. Chesterton has a wonderful quote here where he says that the danger of not believing in God is what? Well, not believing in nothing, but instead of believing in anything. Isn't that interesting? that when we run into people who say they don't believe in God, what they're really saying is they believe in anything. But that goes back to to what we said earlier, that people believe in their own character. It's their own characteristic. It goes back to the father of all lies. See... In Romans 8, 7, what does Scripture say about our natural mind? Well, it's hostile towards God. It does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so. Yes, it has a moral inability, and it is powerless towards living a righteous life. And so, what do people bristle at when Christians talk to them? (laughs) The message of the gospel that calls for repentance. It reminds me of an individual that whenever I got around him, this is years ago, he, he bristled when I brought up the gospel. And it took me a long while to to understand that he didn't see himself as being a sinner. Yes. This is really why we go to worship. We go to worship because we recognize that we are sinners 
with no power to get rid of that sin or go to heaven. But we know that in worship, we hear the word of God. And what does the word of God tell us in worship? Well, it tells us first that we we are sinners, lost and condemned. And, and at the same time tells us that we are saved through our Lord Jesus Christ. It reminds me when, when we go to worship on a Sunday morning, one of the first things we do is confess our sins. And the next thing we do is we hear the pastor tell us that we are forgiven through through Christ our Lord. So where God is concerned, what does the Bible say about us instinctively? Well, in Jeremiah, for instance, have forgotten him and trusted in falsehood or exchange the truth for a lie, worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. That's Romans 1. And it's the truth of God that we exchange for a lie. Yeah. That's why we're getting near the end of studying the book of Proverbs. And that definitely is the truth of God. And many people do not believe it. So there's an idea of confirmation bias. It's been around forever, and it's splashed throughout the Gospels with Jesus. What does Christ's biographies highlight? Well, the fact that uh, Jewish leadership didn't want Jesus to be the Messiah. Therefore, he couldn't be the Messiah in their mind. And thus, uh, they looked for an excuse to take him down. Well said. In, in other words, they believed the lies that were in their hearts and took every opportunity. In fact, what did they say in John nine twenty two? Well, we already agreed that anyone that confessed him to be the Christ was to be put out of the synagogue. And who did they do that to in John chapter 9? Well, that was the blind man that had come to, come to uh, see Christ. Christ, through a miracle, got him to, to see. And, and he was removed from the synagogue. Even yeah. his parents want an answer for him. Yeah, Jesus acknowledged their close mindedness during, also during his trial when they asked if he was the Christ, and he responded in Luke 22 I tell you, you will not believe, and if I ask a question, you will not answer. Wow. That's the familiar post-truth philosophy we see everywhere today in this century. As someone once said, Christianity's answers are not hard to find. Instead, they are what? They're hard to accept. You know, yes. Yes. We're, we're talking about each one has its own characteristic, which reverts back to the devil. And the char characteristic of God is truthfulness, which does not, it, it leads to a different pathway for us. I find that interesting. Each of us has our own truth, so to speak. Yeah. It has some foundation. And we like the truth that fits best with our view of reality. But the real view of reality is explained in John 14, verse 6, where who is the truth? Well, Jesus himself says, I am the way, 
the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. It's Christ who can transform and renew our minds so that we can hear, understand, and accept God's truth about ourselves and our moral bankruptcy. And that's what I see, you know, kind of the issue that they, they, they don't want to confess their sins at the beginning of a worship service. We're all poor, miserable sinners. We're all in need of forgiveness. And that's what Christ in the, in the absolution gives to us through his death and resurrection. In an episode of Seinfeld, you know, that was a comedy, uh, Jerry had lied to one of his girlfriends who was about to put him through a lie detector test. And he apprehensively leaves to take the test, but his friend George offers him the following advice. What does he tell him? He says, Jerry, remember, it's not a lie if you believe it. Yes, Jerry, just remember, it's not a lie if you believe it. Well, it still can be a lie. And that's why we encourage you to join a proper Christian church to hear God's word. More on lies on tomorrow's law and gospel. Until then, God bless you. Listen to Law and Gospel each weekday morning at 9.30 on KFUO. For a tax-deductible gift to Law and Gospel, please make your check out to Law and Gospel and mail to Law and Gospel P.O. Box 28910, St. Louis, Missouri, 63132, or call toll-free 1-877-267-1962. Views and opinions expressed on Worldwide KFUO may not represent the official position of the management or ownership of KFUO, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. If you'd like to comment on programs or topics heard on Worldwide KFUO, write us at KFUO, 1333 South Kirkwood Road, St. Louis, Missouri, 63122. You can also leave a question or comment on our comment line at 314-996-1542. We are the messenger of good news, Worldwide KFUO.